All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode here of Corona Geek, the place on Google Plus where we talk all about mobile app development using the Corona SDK. I'm Charles McKeever, and today I'm joining the studio with a special guest, Mohammed Hamid, all the way from Dubai. Say hello, Mohammed. How you doing, guys? Mohammed's part of Game Minion, which has recently been integrated or acquired by Corona Labs, and is going to become part of the Corona Cloud solution that's going to be provided um, in part in Q1 of next year. So we, we're, we're really excited to talk with him today. Uh, also joined with me in studio here is Dr. Brian Burton, author of Hello. several Corona books <coughs> on developing Corona uh, and mobile apps using the Corona SDK. Hey, Brian, you're, you're in the Ozarks today, right? I, I am in beautiful Missouri, which is kind of an overcast day here, but it's it's lovely here. Fantastic, yeah. And we also have uh, Christopher Ward. Say hello, Toph. How you doing? All right, guys, uh, we've got a lot of stuff to cover, and we need to, we need to get into it uh, right away. And the first thing that we need to do is dish out that T-shirt winner. Uh, Yay! Yeah, so Toff, before, I'm sorry, let me back up a little bit. Before I do that, why don't you tell us what we're going to talk about today? Well, first, I think we ought to talk about that T-shirt winner. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Knock that up in there. Okay. Uh, we also have a wonderful little guest star on the show. You know, it's, it's always good to have celebrities come and go as we go. <laughs> talk a little bit about the build notes, uh, a little bit about Project Glue On. Uh, obviously, talk to Muhammad. <laughs> And do maybe a little informal poll, because we haven't tried that yet. It sounds like a wonderful experiment. And then wrap it up with pretty much whatever we can scrape up. How's that? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> All right. Well, today's T-shirt winner is uh, David Oshura from Honolulu, Hawaii. David, yes. David is a, He's been on some of those meetups. He, he was on the big Corona meetup that we did uh, several weeks ago, and he's a, a regular on on uh, Corona, the Corona Geek channel, or whatever you want to call it on Google+. And so, yeah, so we'll get that out to you, David. Thanks for participating, and thanks for, you know, congratulations for being our winner for today. If you're interested in entering to win, or entering for a chance to win, a, a Corona Labs <coughs> uh, t-shirt, then you're going to want to go to coronageek.com slash giveaway and fill out the form there. Basically, we collect the information that we would need to be able to send you the T-shirt should you win, uh, along with a couple other questions just about, uh, you know, how you use Corona and where and things like that. And uh, that's it. And if you go ahead and follow us on Google+, Facebook, Twitter, you have it, you, you name it, uh, then you'll be able to you know, know when you're a winner and we'll email you to let you know as well to get the shirt size uh, so we can send it out to you. All right, and so let's see. What's in the news today? What, what's what been happening lately? Anybody got any? Hmm. Good stuff. Good stuff, yeah, some excellent stuff. I think, uh, what was it, last <laughs> Friday, Corona Labs announced that um, they had acquired Game Minion. And they were going to be rolling that in as part of the Corona Cloud solution. So that's that's pretty exciting, don't you think? I, I'm, I'm excited. What do you think, Mohammed? Are you excited? Oh, yeah. It sounds really great. I mean, these Game Minion guys, I think they sound awesome. I think, uh... I've heard they do a fantastic <laughs> job. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't wait to get to the point where we're going to talk about all that because you guys seem to do everything and then some. Which, which Actually, I th- yeah. Yeah, I can tell you even the first conversation we had with David Rangel and his reaction when we told him what we've done. Yeah, you know, he's like, he's like, this is a ton of stuff. You know that? I'm like, yeah, we know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you, you noticed, huh? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't think he believed we did it. By the way, I mean, I hope he's watching this, and he'll probably kill me for saying this, but he didn't believe we did this stuff. <laughs> he'll deny it now. But. <laughs> it's easy to easy to deny. Uh, yeah, so, so yeah, we want to get we want to get into all of that and talk about that. But that's that's some crazy stuff going on there. Uh, that you guys are, are doing, and I'm really excited about it. Uh, so before we get to that, though, let's talk about this latest build. So there's a lot of bug fixes going on. Uh, basically, the guys are hunkering down and at Corona Labs, and they're they're squashing bugs. Uh, a lot of Android fixes, things like that. 
I know they, they introduced a lot of Android features um, lately, right? Or, or extended a lot of Android features. So it's probably probably has something to do with that. Just, just you know. Well, and as uh, Walter mentioned in his last uh, blog post, they have brought on all these great additional engineers, and they're able to really get a lot of things taken care of that I'm sure has been on the plate that they've wanted to tackle for some time. But now we're starting to see what's happening because of those extra engineers. We're seeing a lot of bugs squashed and great output. So I can't wait to, and, and I'm sure also, you know, speaking uh, as if I actually knew what was happening over in, in Corona Labs, uh, they're, they are getting ready for this integration with Game Minion and the Corona Cloud and a few other features as well. So this is an exciting time. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And one of the things that was included uh, most recently in the build notes was this thing called Project Gluon. Have you guys been tracking that? We have. Oh, yeah. So Brian, yeah, Brown, that's exciting stuff. What, what exactly is Project Gluon? Well, Project Gluon is going to allow us to have um, integrate external packages or modules into Corona, and uh, you know it's all going to be value added. It, it's just uh, anybody who's worked with Java or um, uh, you know Macromedia products in the past, how much we valued being able to throw a plugin into the uh, whatever we're trying to do that just makes the work that much easier. So we're going to start seeing a lot more additional tools available to us through the Project Glue one. Oh, cool. Yeah, I, I thought it was interesting. Walter talks about in the, in the blog post, uh, which we'll have in the show notes, he, he talks about the fact that a glue on is, is, comes from, I think, particle physics. And it's one of, these, one of these pieces that glues everything else together. So I thought that was pretty funny that, you know, a bunch of nerds over there. Coming up with what, what, <laughs> with these names, <laughs> I, I thought he made that up. Yeah, you thought he made that up. <laughs> Actually, the fact that the particle physics guys couldn't come up with any other word other than "well," it just glues on. Yeah. We'll call it glue on. Yeah, glue, yeah, that's pretty. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> These guys got a lot to think about during the day, and you know, naming stuff isn't part of it. But yeah, so I I, I equate that to kind of like a uh, the, the nearest thing that I can imagine is with WordPress, you have plugins, and if you want to create something, you can tap into what the uh, the WordPress uh, all automatically allows you to do, and you can extend it to make it do completely new things. So uh, I, I I think that would would significantly extend. Uh, I mean, I, I could see it creating a whole marketplace. Oh yeah, so. this is going to be very exciting for Corona. Yeah. Uh, and for, as a developer, I can't wait to jump into it. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff that are already out there, like the particle physics and things like that. And I can see uh, more tools coming on board that are even that are plugins that are are just hard coded into as a plugin. We're going to be able to do some really cool stuff in very, very near future. Yeah. That this is really, um, you, you know, Walter talks about the fact that Corona is leading the pack, and this, any, any complaints anybody had about, well, it's lacking this feature or lacking that feature, those those complaints are now null and void. It's we're, we're just going to have all those great features available in very short term. Yeah, yeah, that would that would certainly eliminate it. I mean, again. Yeah, there you go. Put that up on the screen, Chris. You know, I did. Like I said, it's with WordPress. If there's anything you want to do, really, this has been my motto for good lord two years now, probably. Where you kind of think, okay, well, I just need to code this, and oh no, wait a minute, let's go look for a plugin because about 15 million other people have already wanted this same feature. So somebody's probably already coded it, and so you just go check out the you know where the plugin directly directory and see what feature do I want because there's probably 20 of them out there already. Yeah, now I, I would right. I would imagine that would still mean that things like anything that gets rolled into core, I mean like with WordPress you have the core WordPress piece, right? I, I would imagine that anything that gets rolled into core might replace uh, the need for something that a plugin does, but now it's part of the the overall system, so you, you you know you don't need to right. have a plugin for it. So, but it's but even if you didn't like maybe the way something worked, you could 
still create something separate. So uh, that kind well, of WordPress has been doing that for years where somebody comes up with a really cool plugin, they go, wow, that's a great idea. We're just going to put that into WordPress. We're yeah. done. Yeah. So, I mean, I would love to see Corona follow a similar model where I can either go look at a directory or marketplace and see, okay, who's got the feature I want? Uh, okay, it's not there yet. Here, I'll go write it and put it out there on the marketplace. Yeah, yeah. we watched, uh, yes. uh, for the past several years, we watched uh, WordPress just go from, you know, there's a few plugins. To, like you said, there was like, what, 22,000 plugins. So, it's yep. insane. Insane. All right. So let's talk about Game Union. Let's talk about cloud mm -hmm. services. So, uh, so Mohammed, for, for everybody who doesn't know what Game Union is, it's it's, it's just now coming mm -hmm. on their radar. What what exactly is it? So basically, in, in a nutshell, what uh, Game Union provides is the backend as a service. So all the ugly stuff that uh, game developers want on the backend, whether it's leaderboards, achievements, uh, multiplayer, push notification. <clears throat> so all the sort of the the, the non-clients sort of the customer-facing stuff, what you have to deal with to, to develop high, you know new advanced capabilities, uh, that's what we basically handle. We take the headache from uh, for you having to develop that, having to you know spin up servers, develop uh, logic to handle all this stuff. We basically put it into one simple web call for you to have all of that. That's a, that's a, that's amazing. So this isn't uh, this isn't. Uh, like you said, you mentioned leaderboard and things like that, but this isn't this isn't just like game center or no. just this piece or just this that piece. I mean, it's it's all of these things in, into one package. Yeah, the idea is that uh, the first the initial premise we wanted to do is we wanted to make it simple. We wanted to make it scalable and fast, um, and be multi-platform. So I want to be able to develop my game on an Android and iOS, which Corona does, and then. I want to integrate all these amazing capabilities, but I don't want to deal with the headache of how to manage the push or how to develop a multiplayer system. I just want to be able to <clears throat> integrate the system, and regardless of what platform I'm, my game is deployed on, it should handle it automatically. You know, I don't care. I want Game Mini to deal with it. If I want to submit a move, I want Game Mini to know that my opponent is running on Apple and I'm device and I'm on an Android. Go ahead and you deal with it. You know, don't let me waste my time. Or, or energy, or or ex, you know, to develop this because indie developers or studios don't have the time, or the inclination to develop these kind of systems. Oh, okay, okay. So, so, so you guys sound like you you adopt the same philosophy that Corona Labs does with with trying to make things as simple as possible. Absolutely. I mean, this is really why it was a a perfect uh, marriage. Um, it it just it just made sense. You know, we. Our, our motivation and our passion to support games developers was was identical to what Corona guys and and, and actually <clears throat> my co-founder who happens to be also be my brother Ali um, he's a Corona guy I mean he's been developing Corona applications internally for for a couple for two years I think uh, he's been a pro subscriber for two years so we already liked working with Corona and we've been following them and we're following the community and uh, it just made total sense. Uh, for for the companies to come together. Well, cool. And there in the Corona Labs announcement, they said that you you're you're going to be uh, joining the Corona Labs team. So, what's what's going to be your role there now? <clears throat> well, basically, I'm going to handle. So, so the the partners in crime when it comes to Game Union is uh, Ali does the, the majority or 100 percent of the technical stuff. Uh, I do the non anything that is non technical. So, so moving forward, um, Ali will be handling the cloud um, platform or the Corona Cloud uh, part of the Corona Labs, and I'll be doing uh, the mainly the business development um, for the whole Corona as a whole. So not just the cl the cloud products, but as well as the SDK and whatever cool and wonderful things uh, we have planned uh, in the future. Okay. Okay. <coughs> so now, <sighs> Corona Cloud. Is that going to be a? Uh, do you know if that's going to be a separate thing from your your Corona license, or is that going to be? I mean, is that going to be something that's part of? How how does that work? Mm. Well, the Corona Cloud is is an independent service of the Corona SDK. So you can have the Corona SDK. You pay for your annual subscription, happy with it, and then you can 
not actually not even necessarily use the Corona SDK, even though I don't understand why you wouldn't. But if you chose not to, you can still use the, the Corona Cloud uh, part of it, independent of the Corona SDK. And this is something that uh, we, uh, we both felt, uh, parties felt strongly about, that we wanted to make sure it's an open system that other people can take advantage of uh, the Corona Cloud. But it is going to be an independent uh, separate. So it's not tied in that you don't have to use both or, you know, there isn't an extra charge that you're going to be uh, paying for on the on the SDK side now. Okay, so so the Corona Cloud doesn't necessarily mm -hmm. affect your the developer licensing fee that, that people are already mm -hmm. accustomed to, and it's going to be a service that anyone can use, not just Corona. Absolutely. Well, that's Absolutely, fantastic. Yeah. yeah what a, what yeah, a, that's very exciting. That is very exciting because you've got all the the craziness that was going on with uh, Open Faint and GRI and and all of that kind of stuff, and <laughs> it, there just needed to be a there needs to be a solution that that's promoted as like you say multi platform multi everything that's that's fantastic I, I mean our strategy is if if your toaster can access the internet you're more than welcome to to use <laughs> corona cloud so we we have absolutely no issue so hang on if you're an existing game minion user you're already there you're working you're transitioning mm -hmm. over to corona cloud what happens to those guys Absolutely no impact. So because our, our code is, is all uh, REST-based, so all our web calls, so our strategy is that um, ideally in, the, in Q1 2013, we are going to be transitioning to the Corona um, a Cloud domain. Um, so the transition from Game Minion into Corona Cloud will be zero impact. So if you are currently today have a published game or developing for Game Minion, when it comes to the rebranding, we will shift you into the Corona Cloud uh, gradually um, no data will be lost. Your history will be there. Uh, you're not going to get any downtime on the uh, on your game or anything. So there's going to be a smooth transition until we guarantee that everybody is out of the uh, gameminion.com uh, URL, and then we will sort of terminate that, and then only have the Corona Cloud uh, URL or uh, domain. Sweet. For, for okay. Great. I'd like to hear you yeah. taking care of your existing guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. So now, Mohammed, I, I got a question for you. Walk mm -hmm. me through the process. Uh, I'm a developer. I've created this awesome app that's going to be, you know, everybody's going to want to download it. It's going to be better than Angry Birds. And so we're ready to go. I want to have cloud services on the background. I put in the code to connect to Corona Cloud. What do I have to mm -hmm. do on the cloud side? So the, the process is very simple. Uh, it's going to get a lot simpler when we do the full integration with the Corona SDK, but let's take the scenario today. So you'd go to the Corona Cloud or the Game Minion website, you'll create an account, and you'll do your basic configuration. So I create a leaderboard. So I'll go to the web portal, I'll say new leaderboard, and then I can you know, set certain configuration. If I want to enable push, I'll go to the push, and I upload my certificates. So I, I, set, I do my setup onto uh, the cloud infrastructure. And then basically, I just make the API calls for my application. Uh, let's say I want to submit it. a score. Yeah, so I want to submit the score. We've we've even um, created a helper libraries uh, on um, uh, Corona. So the idea is just you you initiate a game minion by requiring the Lua library that we have, <clears throat> and then you say submit score, and that's it. There's really that's awesome. And, and this is only the first step. I mean, one of the things we want to do is we really make it a zero effort for you to be able to integrate sort of the Corona Cloud uh, system into your Corona game. And and again, this this is so fantastic because this goes right back to the whole mentality that Corona's had from the beginning that it's available for everybody. If, if anybody's yeah. ever researched some of the competitors that are out there that are doing cloud services with mobile, there's almost as much programming that has to be done on the cloud side as there does mm -hmm. on the app side. And, and you've taken care of that, right? Absolutely, because one of the things we, we, we thought about when we started even Game Minion is, you know, developing on the server is a completely different paradigm. It's a completely different yes. complexity. Scaling is different. Your requirements and restrictions are completely different. Um, and our, our, our theory is this. Um, can, you know, Amazon Web Services is fantastic. Can somebody replicate it? Probably. Would you want to? Not very likely. Uh, you know, they, they, can, they, can, they can give you economies of scale. 
And the other thing is this. Your service that you're going to put together is only as good as your technical ability to do this. Um, whereas this is what we do. This is our bread and butter. This is, we have the passion and many years expertise. So you're leveraging uh, on what we do best. Uh, at the, and then you're taking advantage of our economies of scale. You know, how many users per, per month are you going to have? We're definitely going to have more, regardless. You can have a fantastic hit, but here, from the sheer volume, we can give you this value. Um, and plus, we will add more features. We'll maintain it as an indie developer, or develop your key points, our resources, time, and cost. You know, you don't want to develop a tool for an application where you can leverage on, um, on Corona Cloud service. Very nice. Now, you mentioned Very scaling. I, I like that term because, uh, you know, whenever I launch my app, it is really going to shoot up there and I'm going to get 50,000 people in the first day and it's going to knock it out of the park. And i got to figure out how to support all of that because, you know, they're all 50,000 of them are going to want to do multiplayer at the same time. Absolutely. <laughs> um, it, well, first thing is when you do launch your game, let me know so we make sure that we're ready for okay, it. Well, yeah. Don't any surprises. <laughs> um, the, the, the second thing is I think I'll quote Ali on this one. Um, one of our the secret sauce in game mini really, besides the architecture, is we are ferociously efficient. I think that's the term he uses. I like uh, that. Yeah, um, we we really we and, and not because we're smart. Well, he's very smart, but uh, it's because we're a small team, and and we had to, you know, uh, bite the bullet and make sure that we're very efficient. Um, so, right now, uh, our system actually, I'll be more than happy to share, uh, runs on Heroku. Uh, we are going to be migrating to a, a multi-cloud uh, architecture, uh, so we will be shifting to pure Amazon Web Services, which Heroku runs on. Um, but we are going to be shifting to that. We have automatic scaling system in there, um, so if all the sort of the CDN is already handled. Um, so regardless whether you launch your game and you have a player in the U.S. and another player in China, it's regardless the content will be handled to be able to deliver the content to the closest point where your your players are. So we handle that automatically. We do all the you know the scaling up and down, uh, and we're very conservative. And making sure we have we we don't oversubscribe, so we really oversupply processors, um, bandwidth, whatever, just to make sure that we handle it. Again, because of the economies of scale that we can achieve. Very nice. Uh, so uh, efficient, ferociously efficient. I think uh, growing up, we, when I played football in high school, we had a, a, a sign in the locker room that said, "If you don't have time to do it right the first time, when are you going to have time to do it right?" you know, to do it again. Exactly. And so, yeah, exactly. ferociously efficient probably sums that up nicely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you a quick thing. Um, we need some T-shirts that say ferociously efficient. That's yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> exactly. no, I think that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the things we, 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 we said, actually Game Minion really kicked off with trying to come up, you know, we were open faint users before. And... Um, so we, we started thinking about developing the ultimate backend system. With, initially, I'll be honest to you, no intention in developing it. Uh, this, is, this is actually our third startup between my brother and I. And so knowing that we're not going to develop it, we really didn't have any restrictions. You know, we came up with some crazy ideas, you know, trying to do everything and really spent some time architecting it to make sure it's the ultimate system. Until one point I was sitting with Ali and I said, can we build this? <laughs> it was really, as, and he said yes. I'm like, okay, let's just give it a shot. So we started slowly, and we spent over six and a half months purely on design without a single line of code. Um, so it, it, it's nice to start with a clean sheet of paper and then actually end up actually developing it. It's great. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. That's fantastic. That's so, something I always tell my students that you know, if you go ahead and spend the time up front designing a good architecture, designing a good system, you're going the efficiency of what you're going to be able to create at the end is always going to be so much superior than if you just sit down and start coding, which I think is the tendency of most of us is we, we just want to we want to develop, we want to write code and yeah. it, that that's fantastic that you, you spent six months developing the framework. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. A lot of that comes from 
background experience though too it sounds like yes. you've got plenty of background experience so knowing knowing what to plan is important I, I, exactly this is like i said this is our third startup uh, our first one was actually uh, after we moved back from the us we developed a network management system uh, i don't know if you guys are familiar with openview so something similar to openview on a multi platform um, and then so ali's got a lot of sort of critical enterprise system um, I'd be more than happy. I don't know. He, he's very conservative, very not as talkative. But for example, you know Burj Khalifa, the tallest tower in the world? Mm -hmm. The security system mm -hmm. was designed and implemented by Ali. Oh, wow. As in the, oh, data, wow. the data network. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> if it sucks, it's his fault. <laughs> <laughs> so far, it's doing well. Fantastic. Yeah, that's good, good to have that kind of muscle. Uh, so let me ask. So is this just for game developers or can app developers? I mean, how, how, how could they le leverage the cloud as well? Yeah. So right now, Game Minion is, is initially was focused on, on games. Um, but going forward, we are going to definitely sort of um, take the, uh, the makeup off the, the gaming side and, and expose... Uh, some of the, 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 the roots and the core and, and allow it to be used in, in apps as well. So, for example, uh, you want to be able to develop an app that has push notification. Uh, so you want to be able just to add push or <clears throat> add, for example, achievements and then be able to implement gamification in your app. You know? So it's already built into it. It's a matter of exposing it. Can you use it today? Probably, yeah. There's no, nothing, no limiting factor on why I can't develop an app that has push and gamification achievements uh, today with Game Minion. But uh, no, it was not, it's not restricted for, for games. We will add more capabilities to, uh, to have apps and what people are expecting when they're developing apps, definitely. Gotcha, yeah. Yeah, because there seems like a, there's a lot of things that you, you bring together that could be used. I mean, even the, mm -hmm. and, and the line between apps and games are, are beginning to blur and people, people, how people view them is beginning to blur so it seems like um, it could fit for either right now but yeah the cloud storage and the content delivery fit in perfect with that because I mean I, yes. I can think of several of my clients right now who really they're like well I want to be able to update it myself I want to be able to if I've got cloud storage and they can log in for content delivery and I don't have yeah. to update the app in order to do that Okay, well now we're talking. That's that's a very advantageous thing for a business. Yeah, yeah. And 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 this is just we haven't even really started looking specifically and rolling out features specific for apps. Um, but this is something on the road down the road that we're going to be def adding much more um, capabilities and features that are targeted specifically for apps. Okay. Now let me let me ask you. So there's things in uh, Game Minion that seem to kind of overlap with the Corona SDK. Uh, let's mm -hmm. let's talk about social connect for for example that seems to be a duplicate mm. is that something that's going to be continue to be separate because because it's going to be available to more than just the SDK you know a corona SDK community is that something that's still going to be there still be separate or is that uh, how is that going to work yeah we we one thing that I want to make clear that I don't want anybody out there is that you know, you should be able to use Game Minion or the Corona Cloud services 100%, even if you're not using Corona. So uh, we're not going to cripple it. We're not going to, you know, have remove features just to uh, to make sure that it doesn't, you know, it's not al it's aligned with Corona. It will be independent. So we will we won't be removing any overlapping. Naturally, it'd be a lot easier. We want we might not duplicate the calls inside SD in the Corona SDK because they already exist. Um, but externally, as a web UI, a web uh, call, they'll, they'll be available. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's that's good design. Having repetitive methods or uh, different methods that do basically the same functionality, but you know, one developer is going to have preference for doing it through Cloud Min or uh, Cloud Minion. That, cloud that's a new minion. one, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, through the Corona Cloud, and others may prefer to do it through the 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 traditional method uh, that, that's already available. So that's that's just good design method. Yeah. And I'll give you an example. Like today, if somebody wants to develop a game on uh, using Corona and then a Facebook equivalent, and but he still wants to be able to have them play against each other, so I would have my iOS player 
playing against a Facebook player or whatever, uh, then they can do that if we allow this. It allow, uh, and in the long run, it does help Corona as they can in, in the long because it does open these other platforms which if we close them, then we're sort of shooting ourselves in the foot. Right. So openness really helps everybody, and, uh, so it's, it's good. And oh, by the way, awesome. uh, by the way, cloudminion.com is, is taken. taken. Is taken. <laughs> <laughs> I looked it up too. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, go out and snack. Well, that's that cool. Let's go check that one out. Cloud Minion. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh, okay, so that that makes sense. That all makes sense. So things like let's 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 flip it and say something like this: uh, the cloud Corona Cloud Analytics or the Game Minion Analytics. Could that be used as a replacement for Flurry? Okay, analytics is a, is an interesting one because I think over here um, is we're going to be doing stuff that I think people are going to be amazed because basically what we've done is if you're using uh, the Corona Cloud, every single feature that you're using will have access to the uh, analytics. So we will actually show all this information for you. You don't have to send a single event to us. So what, can, what kind of things can we show you? Let's say if you have a multiplayer game, we can show you how many currently multiple, and this is all real time, by the way. So you can actually watch the portal and be able to see this tick up. Uh, how many multiplayers are, are on there? Are they random challenges or direct challenges? What's the platform split on the multiplayer? Um, how long is the longest game? How long is the shortest game? Or oh, that would be how short is the shortest game? Um, you know, uh, how many players are in a multiplayer game? So imagine all this data. It's already available. We, we actually, because you're running on our service, we have this information for you, so you don't need to send us events. Uh, and this is all going to be done as part of the, the Corona Cloud uh, platform. So you just log in, That's and you have great. this data. That's fantastic. You know, that is fantastic. That's exciting. Yeah. yeah uh, I'm looking forward for my next multiplayer. <laughs> yeah, and, and we do this across every single feature. So let's say you have chat mess, you know, using the chat service. Uh, how many messages were sent? How many were received? Uh, how many people are uh, the average number? And, and where does this help is, for example, you can actually look at trends on uh, how quickly our achievements are locked because that can give you an indicator of how difficult is your game. Um, so a lot of these things we want to be able to allow the user to take this data and be able to optimize or adjust using the content delivery, adjust their game dynamically to be able to, you know, meet a bigger market, uh, you know, for example, let's say you have a game and you want to see how long is an average round takes. You know, is it too short? Is it too long? Uh, so all this data, again, it's available for you. You don't need to send a single line of code. Just by integrating um, uh, the current cloud services, it's available for you. That's okay. And then so we can add real time, somebody's actually playing multiplayer. I mm -hmm. could grab the push notifications in the chat and tell them, Psst, hit the asteroid on the left to get a bonus. <laughs> Absolutely. That's what I want to see. Yeah, absolutely. Because we, you're, you're basically, uh, if you think about it, all this is happening on our servers. And you're sitting there looking at this data uh, coming at you. And you'll be able to do whatever you need to communicate back to the to the, your users in real time. Oh, see, I see Charles's. He's got those mental things. Right? And he's like, oh, I could do that, couldn't I? <laughs> I'm going to track them by IP. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get excited about that because I'm like, you know, there's a certain amount of AI that you could build into it, but there's also, if you wanted to, you know, manual override and go in and, and you know, mix things up, you could totally, I don't know, oh, yeah. I would, oh, oh, I would oh, log in and say, sweating over here. Him he's about to die. Give him another life. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There, there was a, uh, I don't remember what, what, it, what year it was, but a uh, number of years back, there was some sort of bug, and I think, I, I think it was World of Warcraft or, or something. There was some, some sort of bug that happened, and everybody in the game started dying. There was some, some disease that kind of went through, and, uh, and they went back and they looked at people's behaviors. This, like the psychologist came in, they brought a psychologist in, they analyzed everybody's behavior throughout the whole thing, and they said, what What did people do? Well, some people realized that they were going to die anyway, so they just went through slashing and killing everybody. One, some people realized, you know, or, or thought um, you know, that they were going to die anyway, so they, so they started healing other people. Some people, you know, everybody's reaction was different. So, if yeah. You, yeah, if you could have a system where you can just say, Today's plague day, you know. <laughs> you can completely 
you completely make it you know change the rules from from day to day that's cool yeah absolutely this is this is some of the the, the features we want to add going forward uh, in gaming is like persistent worlds and add this kind of uh, massive multiplayer capabilities um, for you to be able to do this um, so yeah and the data and the information is available for you you know you can add even notifications you can add so you can watch say you know if somebody hits a certain score give them something or send me an email or whatever oh, wow. so you, we can add a lot of this intelligence in there that's incredible yeah th th I know flurry uh, you know information is delayed uh, by several hours yep. at least minimum and uh, yeah you have to track you have to say specifically what you want to track and so the fact that you guys do it automatically and it's real time that's, that's yeah a, uh, it's a huge amount of data uh, yeah I can imagine I can imagine yeah okay um, is there any reporting on that? Can you? I mean, it tells you that. So, how's the reporting work? How do you do you run that yourself, or, or do you have prefab reports that kind of a dashboard that tells you what's going on? Or? See, right now, um, the analytics part is not fully. It's not being uh, rolled out into production service. So, okay. this is something that's going to be coming out soon. Oh, and excellent. the idea is that you can you can log in and you'll have all the meters, the dials, the charts. So you'll be able to see real time how many. I want to know, for example, how many users are currently logged on and using my, my game now, you know? Gotcha. What countries are they in? You know, what platform are they using? Okay. You know, what's my split? So you actually have dials and charts, almost like a dashboard format, and you'll be able to suit it. In the future, we do want to allow you to be able to, to customize your own reports and get a, a monthly report or whatever. This is something uh, that we are, we're planning to do. But in the beginning, you'll, it'll be just visual on the report form. So Ali's he's not going to sleep, right? You're just going <laughs> to <laughs> no sleep for the work. <laughs> sleep is, is overrated. And it's totally I know. Overrated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that was uh, wasn't that Leonardo da Vinci who 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 didn't like sleeping? And he did that yesterday. So. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's done. He's done yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so tell us. I mean, you you touched on it, I guess, earlier. But but the cloud services and the, the content delivery portion of the service, you know, give us, uh, give us, you know, I, I mean, you already talked about, I guess you maybe already talked about this with the Amazon S3 and all that kind of stuff like that, but but what can you tell us about that? In, in what sense? Uh, well, I mean, just, I mean, uh, the cloud storage, I mean, how, is there a limit on, on cloud, how much I can store okay. and, and things like that? How does it work? Yeah, yeah how does it work? Give us a okay, so 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 basically, the um, the consensus right now in in the Corona Labs team is that we're going to be able, uh, we can we would like to roll out sort of bundles uh, to to the developers. So they they will have different tiers. We'll have you know we're we're definitely we're looking to have a free tier to be able for the developers to to test on to be able to even actually, and I'm not talking about just on development. They can actually go into production and launch a game running on the free tier, be able to see the traction. You know, we, again, we're, we come from a, from a developer side, so we want to make sure that we continue the story where uh, Corona left off in the sense that get, get the mobile uh, developer some tools to be able to them, for them to launch their app and then monitor the traction. And then if they pick up, then we'll be able, it's a win-win for everybody. <clears throat> for us, small amount of traction is not going to really break the bank. But it can make a big difference for the developer to be able to get some traction. Yeah. So we're willing to take to take a hit on that just to get to get you up and running to test the tool. Um, so, and then so what what we're gonna do is basically we wanna simplify the model in a sense that you only pay what you use. You know, we will try to break it down to simple mod, uh, metrics. So whether it's API calls, push notification, and storage, very simple. You know, if you're in this tier, these are the resources you're allocated. And then so on and so forth. If you pay a monthly subscription or whatever that we agree on, um, and one thing I want to assure everybody: everybody's worried is like, oh, you're not going to give us enough you know, resources, whatever. One thing I can assure you is, when we did this, uh, we looked at a um, the typical footprint of an API usage of different sizes of games, um, what kind of monthly uh, users they will have, typical downloads and the range, and then we tried to pick. Uh, analyze it and say, okay, if this particular size game, this is the amount of APIs they'll use, assuming, you know, industry averages of downloads, this is the sort of the footprint it will achieve. Therefore, we will give you this uh, estimated API calls plus a little bit buffer just to get you going. So this is not a random number. This is actually a studied process 
and we analyzed and we looked at what is the best. And the advantage now, we're being with Corona, with Corona Labs, we can actually validate these 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 numbers even more than we had initially. Um, so we didn't pick these out of the air. They're definitely they're realistic numbers, uh, which I think they're quite. They're going to be very, very uh, generous, I think, just to get you up and up. Because at the end of the day, we want you to use our service. Uh, we want you to get, because if you don't use it, you know, I would look really bad that, you know, we didn't generate revenue for the company of the service. But, you know, we want to encourage you to be able to get on board and, and actually use it. And I think, uh, and we want to see people what they, they can create with it, you know. I don't want to restrict it. I want to be able to allow people to so you know what? Because I think they're gonna come up with some crazy ideas using our system, and that's that's great for everybody. Yeah, I like yes. that. I really like that philosophy of being able to get in and make yeah. sure that it's viable for everybody. You know, make sure Absolutely. that it's gonna be something. And then, yeah, let's let's you know whatever it takes because price is relative um, when you're talking about as long as you're making money. You know, as long as it pays for itself and there's a pro or there's a profit, you know, for, that's all the developers are interested. I think. You know, exactly. That, yeah, so that exactly. makes sense. Everybody wins. Well, well very cool. So, uh, so, do you have any case studies right now? Is there who who's using Game Minion that you'd like to point to? The thing is, people who use Game Minion because we don't require any branding, we don't require that you telling us what you've done, why you're doing it. It's very much us in the in the in the background, you know. We unlike OpenFaint, for example, we don't have a dashboard that forces you to come up with your own. You know, you own the develop the the user. They're your users. You can create any dashboard you want, any login process with your branding, um, your theme uh, in mind, without having us. So we really can't tell. The only game that we're aware of so far are probably two. One called Peak, uh, which is like a photo sharing yeah. game. Okay. Uh, and then another one is called Jack Ask. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's actually pretty. It's a pretty good game. Um, uh, it's on the App Store. Okay. Uh, and I think it's also on Android as well. I, I think both of them are actually on Android and on iOS. Uh, gotcha. These are as far as the ones I'm aware of. Okay. Uh, but we are we are still in beta, so right. we're expecting a lot more to come up. Okay. I like that philosophy. I mean, it's uh, the the server guys. I always said this: uh, if you know the name of your server guy, he's not doing his job. Right. <laughs> I mean, really, you you should. Do, yeah. What do we pay that guy for? What is he, does he actually do anything, or does he just go get donuts and coffee and come back? <sighs> no. If everything's working as it should, you should never even know his name. You should never even know he exists. Right. You should even go yeah. server. What server? We don't have any servers. What? What, what do you mean? You know. Right. So I like that philosophy. Yes. And, the, and, and the ferociously efficient part sort of a little bit uh, bugs me sometimes because even if we have one of the games or people are testing and, and they use up a lot of resources, we don't see it. You know, we use a lot of analytical tools internally in our system. Uh, some of the things we've implemented goes down to the method, but sometimes it's so efficient that we can't really... I, I look at it with Ali and I'm like, nobody's on our system. He's like, no, he's like, we, we've scaled up so much, the usability is like under 1%. I'm like, Wait. maybe maybe you should take out some stuff off so I can see something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I, I want to see this. You're right. You know? <laughs> so whenever you did your, your, your allocation for the resources, because um, I'm curious about that for pricing. I mean, did you say like, okay... For the you know for the freebie tier, we're assuming the guy is going to have less than a thousand downloads, less than this, and then for the middle tier, he's going to have maybe I don't know over a thousand downloads at ninety nine yeah. cents each, so that you're assuring that he's making money before he starts giving you a bunch of money. I mean, how does that work? Actually, the way we we looked at it, just to share with you, um, we looked at first we, what I did was I looked at the API footprint, as in I wanted to get an idea of a certain size of an app on a single instant, okay. uh, how much API, API calls and storage and push notification they would use. And I broke this down to three different sizes, sort of low min uh, complexity, medium, and high complexity. High complexity being a game that uses multiplayer, and it pushes news, there's a lot of crazy stuff. So that's sort of a much heavier API usage. Okay. And then what I did was I looked at sort of the average uh, downloads 
of an app, low, medium, and high usage. And actually, we were very, very generous. I mean, we looked at, we measured it up to about, I think, uh, 30,000 downloads, uh, which is relatively high. Yeah, so we, I agree. Exactly. Um, and then what we said, okay, if it's 30,000, and then we looked at purely on a freemium model. So I'm assuming we looked at CPMs for advertising. So I got on the ask, like, okay, if this person is doing a pure freemium model, you know, how much of marketing, on, and we actually spoke to ad networks and we looked at the CPMs and we integrated that into a pricing model. So we tried to look at the worst case scenario. Yeah, that's, I'm good for that. <laughs> yeah, so if we look good in the worst case scenario, then we're, we're all right. Awesome. Okay. No, I like hearing that because it, you know, it basically kind of quell, quells all fears that, oh, I start off with these guys and then they're going to charge me. No, it sounds like you've done a tremendous amount of homework to make sure yeah. that you're not basically charging unless they're actually doing well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. It, doesn't, it doesn't do anybody any good. Yes, correct. So, so let me ask, it, uh, if you could add one feature to, to the service. Something that's not there today. What what would you want to add? This is a tough one because it, it's probably on our roadmap. <laughs> so <laughs> something that I'd like today. Yeah. Is there something you can dream up that that, that hasn't been put there, or something that's coming up in the industry that you think would probably good, be a good addition? It's a tough one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Brian, let me come back. What would you want to see? Anything? Oh, I'm I'm excited to just that the the analytics is coming. Um, yeah. I I think that what they're working on is exactly where they need to be, and that real time analytics for a numbers person, I mean, that that's crack. And you're, right. <laughs> I'm gonna be looking at that all the time. Okay. <laughs> so Brian, you've heard it here first. Brian is going to be strung out on analytics. <laughs> no, it's, it's, well, step actually, forward. <laughs> actually, I'll tell you what I what I'd like if if uh, is um, data mining. Going back to analytics, I think something that would be really I think this is a tough uh, problem to to crack. But having some sort of automatic data mining that can look at all the data and propose things automatically to the Developer, I think that'd be pretty slick. That uh, that is a big in the at least in the academic community, the ability to look at big data and do data mining is yeah. is crucial. And um, there there's a whole new area in computer science and computer information systems developing around just those concepts. So yeah, to, yeah. the ability to include that is going to definitely push you way out ahead of everybody else. Yeah. You, could, well, you could put a whole AI section to that, right? Because it's, I mean, it's one thing to have yeah. your, your local app respond and figure out what to do, but if you could collect all that data together and act on it in real time, yeah. Yeah, I think we, we sort of take a very sort of baby step towards that, so we can actually give you based correlation. Uh, but it'd be really cool if we get something much more intelligent that is uh, automated, that can look at the data and does suggestions directly on the portal for the user without any uh, intervention by anybody. I think that'd be really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe yeah. even, yeah, oh, yeah, sorry. Well, well, let's not talk about that anymore. <laughs> that, that makes me, I'm off, I go off on all kind of tangents there. That's 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 crazy. <laughs> all right, well, let's, uh, uh, we're coming up on the three o'clock or for Muhammad on the one o'clock hour. <laughs> so let's, uh, Let's go ahead and, and move on out to some of this other stuff here. Uh, let's let's do our informal poll. Uh, this weekend, I was in the mall, uh, mixing it up, shopping, <laughs> shopping for Christmas, and, and uh, I I was in an Apple store and I saw, hey, the, the thing was packed. I mean, literally packed, and the iPad Mini table was it was completely consumed, and and it was all consumed with. Justin Bieber lookalikes and you know <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that. So uh, I think iPad Mini is going to be a popular device for the holidays. I mean, without without saying, I know there's a lot of pundits, a lot of people who you know speculate and things like that. But just from what I see, I think it's going to be very popular. And and I've been using mine for you know several weeks, if not a month or whatever now. And uh, it's a it's my go-to device. So what do you what do you guys think? Do you think that are you are you gonna buy? 
uh, iPad minis, do you think that they're going to be popular? What are, what's your thoughts? Mm, I don't know. Like I said, I've, I've got the iPad 2, and really I don't think there's going to be that big of a bonus for me. Um, and it's kind of a high price range to go, well, you know, we're going to replace the kids' iPods with an iPod Pad Mini each. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> I need a lot more apps making me a lot more money before I, I start going down that <laughs> road. So I, I almost think there's like a kind of a dollar cutoff where you start going, okay, well, if so-and-so pitches in some money and uh -huh. so-and-so pitches in some money, then, you know, we can go get – because that $200, $199 price bracket – really is cool because now you got okay the grandparents are going to pitch in money and the yeah. aunt's going to pitch in money and everybody pay, okay fine now we'll get them one good thing we well, really i mean ipad mini you're talking a little bit higher price bracket yeah. well you already so, purchased uh, ipod you, several a uh, couple christmas ago you purchased ipods for the kids based on the exactly. collective the collective input from the family I right did. so everybody said okay we did this so but again that was the $200 range i bought them the the $200 8 meg you know, or eight gig units. So everybody pitched in, and those were the two really big things they got. So I can see something along those lines because uh, that that's really good price range. But again, now you're talking that iPad Mini. I can't get one. I mean, they'll kill each other over it. But that's <laughs> really what the price range would be. So that two hundred dollar price range, you can kind of funnel everybody yeah. in. Hey, yeah. give us cards. Give us that works. And so I think anybody who's pricing their devices. Right around that two hundred dollar mark, they're doing that for a very specific reason. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I completely agree. Um, I've got a college student that's she's making the shift to ebooks away from paper books, mm -hmm. which saves us money. But we're trying to decide, you know, is her gift going to be a Nexus Seven, or is it going to be an iPad Mini? Uh, she likes. I have an iPad Three, and she loves the iPad Three. So, but you know, it's it's another hundred and thirty dollars that yeah. that pays for going out to several nice places to eat. That's that's I yeah. yeah. It, it, I I have not made the decision yet, but but we always practice. You know, uh, Christmas come or gift giving on the twenty sixth. Oh, okay. So, so I don't have to make that decision yet. There you go, <laughs> Muhammad. What do you what do you think? iPad um, Mini would. You know, I, I don't see what the use case for me personally. Yeah. I mean, where would, where would I use it? Um, I, I, I mean, I, I'm actually, I have like the iPad Zero. Oh. You know? <laughs> it's, it's just so old, I think I'm embarrassed to even call it an iPad. It's the first iPad, and uh, uh, it looks cool. It's actually quite portable, and it's nice to travel with, I guess. Um, would I get one? I don't know. Um, I, I don't have the sort of the temptation that I had when the first iPads came out, or even right. the big iPad. I, there isn't that sort of impulse buy yeah. for an iPad Mini. No, not yet. Well, I tell you what. Uh, for anybody who's who's watching, who is looking for that, uh, maybe they're going to get one for Christmas, or they're going to, you know, they're 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 uh, going to buy somebody something for the holidays. Um, five bucks on Amazon. It's the uh, it's a, it's a, it's not leather. It's you know whatever that vinyl or whatever that is the case. Leatherette. <laughs> yeah, leatherette. Excellent stitching. Comes with uh, the keyboard, you a Bluetooth keyboard, which by the way is uh, it's got a magnet, so it's detachable. Oh wow! So you could actually. It doesn't make the neat little surface sound though. You know, yeah, yeah, does, yeah. You you can slap it together, I guess, if you want to to get that sound, <laughs> but. But it works uh, exceptionally well, and it and it, it goes into sleep mode when you're not using it, so it saves battery life and, and all this. Now stuff. is that for the that that's any Bluetooth? Is well, that for a seven inch or well, a well this 10 is inch? this is actually for the iPad Mini. This one's for okay. the iPad Mini, and it's it's actually if you go onto Amazon and look for it, it's called QQ Tech, and um, they're putting them out, and they're they're I, I mean literally it's in the five dollar range, and it came. We need to get them to sponsor this. <laughs> it was great. Well, yeah, I, yeah. I wish they would sponsor it, but they're. I mean, I don't know what they at five bucks a pop. I'm not sure, but anyway, it, I've been I've been <laughs> their using. Their budget must be low. Yeah, yes. their budget must be low, but but I've been using it. It's fantastic. Um, I was standing at a Staples uh, last night, as a matter of fact, and there was a lady who was looking for one of these. Um, and we had just seen them over in the mall for you know a hundred bucks, 
So I was like, well, you can get one on you know Amazon for five bucks, uh, and here's here's what you need to know. So so just a little tip if you're in the market for that kind of thing, check that out because um, it, it to me that's a it, great price. Well, it, and it makes it it I like the iPad as a as a device that I can, can create content on. We've had this, this is an ongoing discussion that we've had about is is it something is it a workstation is it something that you can use to create things and uh, i think yes it yes it is uh in my mind most definitely but when i put it into this case um, it definitely becomes one it's yes. magnified yeah it's definitely magnified yes. i can type all it's the keyboard is a lot smaller but i can type on that thing uh once you get accustomed to it i can type on that just as fast as i can type on a regular size keyboard and and that speeds things up because i only got two thumbs you know and i can only <laughs> i can only do that so fast uh and the only the only thing that I have uh, the habit that I've had to break is there's no mouse because now you have a keyboard you have this laptop kind of form factor you want to you want to you know use the mouse there's no mouse uh, but not a problem and, and it's got all the special keys for being able to go to the the home screen be able to search be able to adjust the brightness be able to play music you know I mean it's it it, it turns the thing into this workstation but then you can still slide it out and have the ebook you know factor or the you know the, the the ipad the tablet factor um so anyway yeah I, i've been looking for an, an uh, one that would fit sort of the uh, kindle or something like that because both the kids have kindles and uh you know that would be cool to match that up but i don't know i think ipad mini uh i'd like to see the stats after the holidays I don't know, really my on. brother is a my brother is a hardcore apple guy and when we were in the u.s he went and he bought a surface okay and he sold his iPad. Really? Ooh. Yeah. Interesting. Which is, wow. He sold his iPad uh, and he got the Surface. And he's just, he, he just thinks it's amazing. Huh. He's slow. And he, he's very sort of very particular about his devices, you know. And, uh, but I was, I was surprised. He, he actually, he, he really loves it. Huh. Uh, okay. How long has he had that? So How long has he been using it? He's uh, had it for a week. A week? Okay. About a week. Okay. okay. Are you saying it wears off after a week? <laughs> <laughs> the shininess kind of dulls a little bit. You're right. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna email you in, a, in about a month and see if he still has it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very cool. Well, my, uh, one last thing I want I want to yeah. note that um, I, I am currently writing a new textbook for those that are non-programmers. And a Game Minion or Corona Cloud will be in one of the chapters once it becomes an official release. Cool. That that is going to be a chapter in the in the textbook. So, and I'll probably go ahead and add it to the the current book that's out there as well. Just add it as a new chapter. Uh, that's one of the advantages of doing the e-publishing is that I can continue to update and add that material. So, uh, Cloud. Corona Cloud, Cloud Minion, <laughs> Game Minion, whatever. <laughs> Corona Cloud will be included as a chapter okay. for uh, all the textbooks. So, um, if if you're holding off on purchasing for that chapter, go ahead and purchase it. You'll get the update as soon as it's available. Yeah, I know. I I, I purchased your books early on, and I can tell everybody that you know when you you send out the update when it's available and things like that, which I think is is fantastic because now you're you know you don't feel like you have to you don't feel like you have to hold off. You don't feel like you're going to be lacking in some way, which it's great. So yeah, we'll definitely put a link to that in the show notes. So if you're interested in that, uh, go check that out. And you can also find that at uh, Bur Burton's Media Group dot com, uh, yes. which Brian has all of his books over there, and you can you can you know like I said. Downloads, download those today and uh, give them out as Christmas presents. You know, because you know, there we go. this holiday season. You know, <laughs> if you want to give them out as uh, gifts, I'll just contact me and I'll send you a coupon code. It's... Oh, cool! Well, there, there you go. Excellent. Very nice. Uh, and as and you can find more information about Game Minion over at GameMinion.com, and of course you can go to CoronaLabs.com to find out all the information there about the uh, Corona Cloud. Uh, and we'll ha we'll have links to all of that in the show notes as well. So, Mohammed, thank you for spending time with us. I know it's yes. late there, and I appreciate you, uh, you know, great. being with us, and giving us all the great scoop on what's going on. I'm excited. I'm I'm looking forward yeah. to to the to the official rollout. Um, just a, a little bit of housekeeping here for the holiday break. We won't be here on the 24th or the 31st. So. Everybody have a great holiday. We appreciate you uh, being with us 
you know, and supporting us and watching the show and everything. So just know we'll probably be putting out some videos during that time to keep things fresh and keep things going, but we just won't have an official live uh, Corona Geek you know, hangout. So we're on... Uh I'm a I'm a season finale episode. You you are you no you're the cliff no you no you're the cliffhanger you're the cliffhanger, you're the cliffhanger. yes yeah. <laughs> yeah so we'll, we'll slap to be continued at the end of the <laughs> like a like a that's no, great yeah, uh, all right everybody well thanks for watching thanks for being with us and uh, Muhammad if you'll hang on after the show that'd be great and sure. Uh, be sure to follow us on Google Plus uh, and Twitter and Facebook and all that kind of stuff like that. And uh, we'll see you next year. Take it easy. Bye. See you guys.